Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor and today we're going to be looking uh, at the 919 patch note. So as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help out a lot on the channel. And check out the rest of our offerings as well. We stream every night starting around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have an awesome, chill community. We'd love to have you. And I'll also do tier lists for every patch. So I've already done the support tier list. And I'm going to do uh, an AD carry and a mid lane tier list over the next couple of days. And I might do a couple more. We'll see how it, um, how it goes down. Then we also have coaching sessions, guides, and a lot more on the channel. So be sure to like, subscribe, check it all out. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. All right, so uh, Aatrox is getting a little bit of a buff from last time. I still don't think he's that good in solo queue. He's got a sub-50% win rate. I think it's like 45 or so. And then even in pro, it's also sub-50%. So I, I think that there will be people that try to play him, but at the same time, I think there are a lot of answers to him. There's just a lot of outplay potential, and ever since they removed his revive, I just don't think he's been quite the same champ that he was. So, people will probably try to play him at Worlds. He'll be all right. You know, I expect like maybe 45 to 50 percent win rate, but he's definitely still going to remain a shadow of his former self. Okay, Akali. I think that Akali is still going to be pretty good. I still see her do well in many of my solo queue games, and I think she has a lot of potential in pro. It does hurt that she can't stop teleport with that stun. I know that one viewer had pointed out that there was a cool play that I think it was Fnatic made in their playoffs over there where uh, Kali hit her shuriken on somebody and then followed them with the teleport. And the problem with that is you're going to show up really late. The fight might already be over because it's going to take you probably at least 5 or 10 seconds to fly across the map. Uh, and if they're ahead of you, if they have like 3 kills and you have no kills and they're just going to have a bigger... Uh, team fight impact so like if Renekton TP's bot and he's got three kills and you're 0-3 as a collie and you try to follow him that may not be a good thing so there definitely is a difference between being able to stop teleport and through some uh, fancy mechanics being able to follow really late on a teleport so it does hurt that she doesn't have the stun and her ult is still I think 40 seconds longer on the first couple of levels so that is pretty rough that she's got 160 second cooldown but this is more damage. This is still 30 more damage now. They had nerfed the damage by 60, I think, early. So it's still not as good as it once was. But it'll help out. So I think she'll still be picked. I think she'll still be a decent flex pick mid and top lane. Uh, but she will definitely have some weaker matchups than she has had in the past. Okay, Annie, I just really think doesn't matter. I know that LS is really big on Annie and that, you know, the movement speed. And she's just so simple to play. You just roll your hand across the keyboard and delete people. It's very easy to farm with her with her Q. So, you know, I still think she can be decent in, like, gold and silver. But at higher elo brackets, I probably wouldn't play her. I don't think this is going to make a huge difference. Getting the extra, you know, 5 or 10% movement speed in the early and the mid game off the E is nice. But realistically, you're only putting one point in this ability anyways. So the scaling cooldown doesn't matter in most games until, like, really, really late game. So... It's okay. There's just a lot of counterplay to Annie. You know, even an item like Banshee's Veil just completely ruins her if the mid lane is actually afraid of you. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of itemization options someone would have to try to counter you. Especially Annie's support. I get asked about Annie's support a lot. The problem is she has really low range on a lot of her spells. Most of them are like 600 range. And so she's just going to get out poked by Zyra's and Brands. And there are a lot of good magic resist itemization options. You can take double magic resist runes. Uh, and then early on pick up either Mercury Treads or Athenes is also really popular, and that has Magic Resist as a component. Uh, Zeke's also has some Magic Resist, so I think unless you get really, really far ahead or you have an AD carry that also does a ton of damage, like maybe with Draven, but I just feel like they're going to be better all-in champs. I think that Leona doesn't quite do the same amount of damage, but it's similar, uh, and she has a lot more, um, just a lot more utility to her, so Annie's okay. Uh, she's very reliable. You know exactly what she's going to do, and you, you know, it's really tough to mess her up. But I think there are probably going to be better options. Maybe she gets picked, you know, into things like Ari potentially in solo queue. She could be okay just because of her reliability and shutting down mobility. But overall, I don't think it's going to matter. This Ash change is actually going to matter. I think that we might see some Ash at the pro level at Worlds, maybe combined with Zyra. Um, or another aggressive range champion. Ash is historically, I think, pretty good into Caitlyn, and I expect Caitlyn might get played because you have a similar level of range, a similar level of early poke, but you have more utility. So, we'll see. It kind of depends on how the um, 
how the meta is going to shape up too. If it's just early aggression, like just camping bot lane constantly, that could be a problem. But if there are like carry versus carry top, junglers might just camp top instead. So if you're seeing a lot of like Riven versus Fiora top lane, which I don't know if we're going to see that necessarily, but if that's the case... Uh, then maybe everyone pays attention to top lane, and then bot lane would be free to harass with, like, Comet build Ash, which I think is really good. Like, Comet into Essence Reaver, then into Trinity Force can be really good. That might be a bit expensive for Pro, but I think we could see it. So I think this is definitely going to help her, though. The slow is nice, although it's not insane. The Q, though, as an auto-attack reset is a very big deal. Just think of that as, like, getting an extra 80 damage up front off of your abilities um, because the auto is basically the reset is a free extra auto attack so it's really really good it's very handy um yeah so I, I think that that's nice i already think that ash is pretty good in solo queue but this is going to help out a little bit more but make sure you know i highly recommend going comet ash and then trinity plus um essence reaver check out my 80 carry tier list from last patch i explained this uh, in detail for about 10 minutes there and i'll talk about it more on this 80 carry tier list if you want to know one of the big things people don't understand about that is that sheen um, interacts with her passive so that if you have like 50 percent crit then your sheen proc is going to do 50 percent more damage so if your trinity proc would normally do 300 damage all of a sudden it's going to do 450 damage so that definitely adds up so yeah i think this helps out ash quite a bit I don't know if she'll necessarily be the number one most contested pick in pro or solo, but I think that she'll definitely, there'll be more spaces where people might want to play her. Okay, Blitzcrank, I don't think this is going to matter that much. Like, the 100 range is nice, but Blitz's main problem is he's just very one-dimensional. You know, you've got your hook, and if you don't hit the hook, you don't have anything else. So, it's not much more utility. I'd much rather play something like um, Pike or Thrash or Nautilus, all of which have, you know, more CC, more tankiness. Blitz does offer probably the most burst damage up front, but I think there's the most counterplay to him as well. So I wouldn't want to play Blitz. I think it's not. It's nice to have a simple champion in the game like Blitz, like Annie, you know, like uh, Garen, but, you know, I would prefer playing something else and learning something else. Okay, Fiora. So I think this is going to be a very big deal. Um, I think that this could bring Fiora into the meta a lot more. She's already pretty good in solo queue. And I would expect to see her in pro, especially in the tank matchups. If people want to play things like Scion or Orn, uh, top lane. Her matchup against Poppy is a little bit more shaky, but can be done. This is going to turn her into a much, much better split pusher because a lot of the times you're going to get Trinity on her. You're going to have Sheen procs. And you want to use things like your E so that you get the extra attack speed and so that you get your Trinity procs. And now you can actually crit towers with Sheen procs off of your E. So that's very, very good. Gives you a lot of attack speed. She's had several buffs as well. I think they buffed her attack speed off of E a few patches ago. Uh, they increased her stun duration maybe 10 patches ago at this point to a 2 second stun. Which has a lot of outplay potential. So that's handy. And then even using your Q... Uh, just so that it does its baseline damage to towers and so it can apply um, on hit effects like Trinity. So you're going to be shredding through those towers a lot faster. And I still think that she's really good if you're good on her, especially if you're good at using the repost or repost. Then I think she can be quite strong. So I would expect to see her uh, quite a bit more in solo queue and potentially in pro. Okay, Gragas, this is mostly for pro. He's okay in solo queue, he's not insane. Most people have been building burst AP on him, so they're just trying to slow down his wave clear a little bit, because once he does start um, getting like runic echoes and stuff like that, maybe they think he's going through the jungle a bit fast. So I'm not sure when you level this up. I'm pretty sure that you level barrel first. This might be the second thing that you level, but I suspect he could probably level his E as well. So I don't know. It, it It's okay. I, I don't think it's going to change his position that much. I still think he'll be a pretty decent pick and pro. Okay, Graves. Not going to matter. You get two extra AD, a pinch extra health every now and then. I'm not really sh entirely sure why he's out of the meta. I think they've just nerfed a lot of the runes that he's good with, most notably like Electrocute. But maybe we can see him again. Maybe he's got good matchups against other AD early game junglers like Kha'Zix, like Zen. <laughs> I still think those champions will probably dumpster him. If they get the jump on him, um, I don't think it's going to make a, a big difference, but maybe, maybe. 
Uh, Heimerdinger, okay, not going to matter for most people, but if you are a Heimer main, it is nice. You know, 5% extra ability power on his turns doesn't seem like a big deal, but with how many times those auto attack in a fight, it definitely does add up. You know, if you have 200 AP in the mid game, then each auto attack is going to be doing an extra 10 damage, which, you know, definitely does add up. It does do more damage. The extra 0.25 seconds on the stun is very handy as well. That's going to give you more time to land your rockets and maybe get a couple more uh, autos off with those turrets. So it's okay. I don't think it's going to move the needle too much on him, but it is really nice if you do like Heimer. So I like showing some love, just, you know, inching up a little bit of some of these really obscure champions. Now, he's not that bad. If you're actually good on him, he's pretty decent, especially in the laning phase. He can be quite oppressive towards melee champions, so they got to be careful. You don't want to buff him too much, but I like him. I think he's a cool champ, so it's nice to have him in the meta. Okay, so they're nerfing out Karma. I really don't like this nerf that much because this is going to affect support Karma a lot. They're saying her non-support damage, Karma still maxes Q as support, right? She's going to get at least three points of it for the laning phase. So Karma can still do quite a bit of damage as support in the bot lane early on just because of her mantra Q and it has really high base damage. But it is going to hurt her, like for sure. It's going to hurt her a lot because she's going to rush Athene's and Ardent Sensor, and that has a lot of AP on it, so... I really don't like that. I think if they wanted to nerf top lane Karma, they should have nerfed the healing off of her W, because that's really one of the main oppressive things against melees, is you just can't all in her because she has her shield and her W. So maybe cut the healing on the W in half, you know, maybe 15% up front and then 15% on the back end instead of 2020. That would have been a better way to nerf it, but as it stands, it'll probably nerf her out of top lane, because uh, that does hurt her all in damage and her wave clear. But. I just don't like to see him dumpstering uh, bot lane karma, but maybe they think bot lane karma is just too risky right now with Caitlyn kind of coming up in the meta and Ezreal still being popular. Maybe they think double poke would be too strong. I'm not sure, but I don't like the way they handled it. I think that's a pretty, pretty hardcore nerf. Okay, Mordekaiser, probably not going to matter. 5% extra shield. Um, it's it's not going to matter. He's okay, but he just gets hard countered by QSS, and I think there are other like more oppressive laners in the top lane. So he does have some interesting uh, mechanics if the enemy doesn't get QSS, so particularly against AP champs. Um, if you can force him onto QSS, it's good. I think you might be able to hourglass when he starts his animation for the ult if you're fast enough, but I'm not 100%, and I don't know if it goes on a full cooldown or just like a 10-second cooldown if you hourglass his ult. But either way, I don't think that's going to matter too much in the meta. Orianna. Now, this is one that is going to matter quite a bit. 50 extra damage is very significant early on on her ult. And the extra point one is uh, significant as well. And so if we see, like, Jarvan step up in the jungle, which I suspect he probably will because they're going to be... They nerfed Sejuani here in a little bit. So maybe Jarvan steps up as one of the premier engage tools. And Orianna plus Jarvan is a classic combo really good if we see things like zach coming back into the meta which i don't necessarily think that's going to happen but just if you have people that'll jump in there that you can ult with ori um then she can be pretty good i mean heck even something like a kha'zix on ganks could be pretty good i just don't know if she's going to be able to stand up to other mid lane mages like syndra and zoe that are kind of uh going to be gaining in popularity even something like cassiopeia i think ori's favored in the cassio at least early but not a hundred percent I don't know all the matchups really well surrounding her, but she's got some. She definitely has some competition at, at mid lane. So we'll see how it goes. She hasn't been very popular at all in the pro scene, but maybe especially if people start to try to do assassins, like if people are trying out Kianas or Akali's, maybe she has good matchups there because she has her shield. Not really sure. So I think some teams will definitely try her out, but it's tough for me to predict whether she's going to be able to outcompete kind of your Zoe's and your Syndra's at that role. If you do, I guess if you do want to like protect a little bit more, if you want a bit more protection for like your AD carry, if you have a strong AD carry um, on your team or you just need a bit more utility, maybe you could go for that. Okay, Orn, not going to matter. Like the big thing with Orn is he can't really trade in the landing phase because he lost his shield on his W. So he just gets bullied and busted up a lot of times. I know there have been some people that have been playing Orin a bit more in pro, but he hasn't really done that much. It is nice that you get to come online with this scaling. Um, ow. Is that you? 
it is nice earlier on. Did you get to come online a little bit faster? But I think they really are going to have to lower it to like 11 um, if you want that to be a thing. If you want the, um, the scaling to be a little bit more relevant. So if they lower it to 11 and you really want to highlight like, okay, he sucks in lane, but he gives out really nice utility to your team. Maybe they could do that. So it's an interesting direction, but I just don't think it's going to matter that much. Certainly not for solo queue. Although, you know, maybe with certain team comps, we could see him in pro a little bit more off of that. Okay, Pantheon. I don't think this guy's that much of a problem in solo queue. I know a bunch of people have been saying he's OP and all this stuff, but like his win rate's not that high. It's like 50%, and he falls off so hard late game. He can't really team fight that well. He does have more survivability after the changes, so that's useful that you can kind of fly onto the back line, disrupt a little bit, and then use your shield to keep yourself alive longer. So he does have more utility now than he used to in the past, but at the same time, I just think there are way more reliable champions that scale better if you want an early lane bully. So I just think that like particularly in solo queue, just like Darius and Renekton are just going to be stronger. But they are nerfing him, so he's going to be even worse. So I, I don't expect to see him a lot in, um, in pro play and in solo queue. I think he's going to drop a maybe a percent off of that. Okay, Rek'Sai... Uh, this is actually very significant. Rek'Sai used to be really good in pro, and I could see her coming back online. I'm not sure. I don't remember the nerfs they made to her. I think they made a nerf to her true damage. But, you know, Conquer is still going to be really good on her. They are giving her more armor, so she's going to have a better clear early on. And then the big one is if you force people out of lane, you can actually pressure towers much harder with the Q. So if you go top, you know, you have a top lane... Um, Fiora or something like that and you kill the top lane Riven and then you go and start taking plates Then she's gonna be a lot better at that. So this could be very good. This is doubling down on her early game pressure. This is a nice way to um, Sort of buff her early game without making her much stronger as a duelist But if you do win fights, you're gonna get a lot better rewards because of the Q. So I like it. I think it's a pretty good change They definitely want to see more action. They want to see 2v2s top you know, junglers go up there and they want to see kills at Worlds. They just, they don't want to see the tank versus tank. So this is a pretty interesting way to go into that. Okay, Riven. Uh, I don't think this is going to change her position in the matter too much. If you're a Riven one trick, this is really nice that this is on a lower cooldown the Valor um, off of Wings. So it will give you like more chances to get that final shield that might be the difference between um, survival and death. So it's pretty handy. I don't think they're doing it just because there's a new skin. I think that they just want to have the potential of seeing a Riven at Worlds because that would be fun. I mean, there are plenty of instances where they release skins and the champions just aren't really that good or aren't really that relevant in the meta. I mean, just literally last patch, Zaya. Um, just that last patch, Zaya um, got a nerf and she also got a skin. You've seen like Dunkmaster Ivern was released a while ago and... You know, he hasn't been relevant in the meta for years. Uh, you know, last year, the KDA skins, yes, Kaisa was popular. Yes, Akali was popular. But Eve was never really that big in that meta. Ari was never that big. So two of those skins just weren't really that popular for pro. So I, I don't buy into the conspiracy that they're buffing this, you know, just so that people buy more skins. I mean, obviously, most of the time... You know, they're going to give skins to champions that are pretty strong in the meta or that have a really large, like, um, popularity or one-trick community. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Like, they're not going to do a million different skins for Urgot or Twitch, right? Because people just don't play those champions a lot. Um, so, Riven is very popular. So, I, I could see getting on board with that. Like, they want to give skins to, you know, at least a decent chunk of their skins towards popular champions although i think they do a good job of providing skins for at least some over the year of like non-popular champions too but i don't think the balance team specifically comes in mind and says you know what we need to really buff this champ so that we can sell more skins i just don't think that's borne out statistically when you look at the vast majority of skins that are released i think it's just a coincidence a lot of times when it does it's like yeah they release a lot of skins they do release them for popular champions you know more times than not and yes, popular champions are usually popular because they're strong. But I just don't think that that's something that they're trying to do most of the time. 
anyways, Sejuani, um, I don't like the nerf to Sej. I think it's good to have tanks in the meta just to balance out um, a lot of the assassins. Because the problem is, I know they want an up-tempo meta. I know they want 1v1 kills in lanes. You know, people would much rather see Akali versus Riven top lane than, uh, you know, Poppy versus Malakai, right? It's just more exciting. You don't want a snooze fest in your lanes. But if you don't have tanks to kind of um, check some of these early game aggressive champs, then you do run the risk of worlds just being too snowbally, right? Where the, the Fiora gets two kills top and the game's basically over because she's going to be able to just kill anyone else. And it's squishy, right? But if you have tanks, they add that level of stability. So even if your Akali feeds O2 top lane, if you have a Sejuani in the jungle, you might still be able to make plays and keep your team in the game long enough for that um, Akali to catch back up. So... Yeah, they're nerfing her because she's consistent, because she's a good, um, you know, just overall champ in most uh, most metas and most team comps. Um, but I just don't like that they're nerfing out one of the premier champs, one of the few champs that are tanks that are actually getting played consistently. Um, because, it, once again, it, it runs the risk of encouraging a meta that's too snowball-y. Okay, Scion. Um, I like how they're saying... You know, in skilled play, he's weak. So we want this to be more helpful in higher level play. His point click shield. That's not skill expressive. If you want to make his skill expressive stronger, then like make his ult like damage stronger or like increase the armor shred or something if he hits somebody um, by pushing a minion with his E. Something like that. But anyway, Scion's okay. Uh, you know, if you do want to top a tank top, um, then I still think he'll probably be an okay option in pro. He's one of the more likely tanks if we do see any tanks top lane. <clears throat> so I like it. I like that there's a diversity of meta. I don't want it to, you know, snowball too hard. I want games to last longer than 20 minutes. Okay, Silas, I think he's still going to get played. This is a nerf, you know, four armor, and they are taking away some of his damage on Petricide Burst. But I still think he's going to be pretty strong as long as he can clear the jungle. Um... He just has so much utility, you know, he's got Engage, he's got CC, he's got a really nice self-heal, he has lots of AoE damage, um, I think it's probably fine. Okay, Tom Kench, I don't like this nerf, I mean, they're saying that he should be more vulnerable to poke, but he's already vulnerable, like, he doesn't do anything in the lane, he sits there, and it's just like a farm off most of the time, and Tom Kinch is really dangerous for pro, because he is a Quicksilver Sash on a stick, you know, he can save people from situations that would otherwise kill him, but he also has his ult that allows you to pressure side lanes, and really discourages people from split pushing, that's the part that's really dangerous, because his ult is still, I think, on like a 130 second cooldown, maybe 140, so they nerfed it a little bit, but it's still the cooldown is too low. So they should make his ult like 160 to 180 second cooldown at early levels. I think that's how you nerf him for pro. And then I would actually give him back a little bit more healing off of grayscale. Or shielding. Just to allow him to survive the laning phase, but then nerf his macro a little bit. Or if you're going to do that, at least give him some compensation. Like, if you're going to say, okay... Um, he can get poked out, then give him better engage, you know? Like, add more damage to his Q, or increase the slow on it, or, you know, something like that, right? So it's like, okay, if you want him to be less safe, then allow him to be more dangerous and be effective. That's what I think, if that's what they want him to do. So, or maybe if you eat a minion um, and hit an ally when you spit out the minion, maybe it refunds the cooldown by, like, half, or something like that. So you can actually eat minions and spit them out for extra harassment trading without putting your W on <clears throat> too long of a cooldown. Because he has that mechanic, he can spit out minions and do decent damage, but it's too risky to do it because the cooldown's so long on your W, and you're so vulnerable if you can't, or you're out, your um, AD carry so vulnerable if you can't save them. <clears throat> so that's a thought. If you're like harassing with minions, it still would cost a decent chunk of mana, but you wouldn't be as vulnerable for as long to take a risk. So, anyways, um, all right, Twisted Fate, not going to matter. Even if you are going for the on-hit Twisted Fate, you're going for the Trinity Force version. You max your E typically last, and so you're going to have an extra 10% attack speed, 10 damage. 
It's, it's not going to matter for pro. I still don't expect him to get picked a lot, maybe in some very niche situations. But And I he's still going to be very sort of niche in solo queue too. So I don't think it's going to move the needle that much, maybe like half a percent. Okay, Vayne, um, she does need some help. She is really weak in the early game. I would want I want to see more in the early game from her just so that she has some um, some potential. So maybe just like front load a little bit more damage on her Q and just flatten it out. So I think that her Q does enough damage later, but like maybe make the base damage a little bit higher earlier on so that she can actually trade with her Q. So that's one thing. They did um, buff the damage a lot on her Condemn if you Condemn someone into a wall. Maybe that could be okay. Maybe um, if you hit, if you do Condemn someone into a wall, maybe it would reduce the cooldown on it or something. I'm not really sure, but this is okay. I'm just not sure if it's going to be enough to help her. Because her problem's not that she doesn't do enough damage late game. She does a lot of damage late game, and she's got a lot of utility, mobility, um, and things like that. So that's all good. The problem is the laning phase, and I know they want her to be weak there, but she's just a little too weak. So, like, I think that maybe increasing the base damage by 5 or 10 or something like that on her Q at early levels, even if you flatline it later, is probably worthwhile. Okay, Vagar, not going to matter. Yeah, his event horizon is a lower cooldown, but, you know, both support. This is not what you max. I mean, as support, maybe you max this. I still think you probably max your Q first. And then I'm not sure as mid lane. I'm almost positive you max your Q first as mid lane too. But maybe this makes it more tempting to get more points in E than W. But it's, it's just not going to matter. Okay, Zen. Now, Zen is actually pretty strong in the early game right now. Um, and he can definitely go and bully people like Kha'Zix, like Lee Sin. Um, I don't know his... Um, Rek'Sai matchup, but he can probably bully her too. So, you know, if we are developing into an early game aggressive jungler meta, which is possible with the Rek'Sai changes, the changes to Sejuani, things like that, then he is one of the best kind of at the early game. So getting a bit more heal off your passive is pretty nice, especially in early levels. And then I believe you max your Q. So getting a a little bit of extra damage is good there, too. Remember that the Q hits three times, I'm pretty sure. And this is bonus damage on all three of those hits. So it's not just three damage on, you know, two points in Q. It's nine damage, right? And it's not just four damage or um, six damage, right, on your three points in it. It's 18 damage. So this is actually fairly significant. So I don't think he's all of a sudden going to be the best, um, you know, jungler out there. But I think that he certainly can pressure if that's what your team wants. If you want like an aggressive aggressive laners and you really want to you know pressure and try to get dragons, contest those scuttles and things like that, I think he definitely has a place. And it's very difficult to kill him as a ranged champion too once he gets his ult. So <clears throat> I think he has a lot of power potentially, especially <clears throat> if you go in and you've got the Oriana ball. Um. You know, and then you've got your ult to protect and keep you up. Or if you have a Rakan or something and you go in and Rakan can E to you and then W with his ult. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for him. So I would I would not be surprised to see at least some Zen at Worlds. Or Jin or however you pronounce it. You, me. <clears throat> I mean, they might as well just delete this champion. I don't know. Maybe you'll still see her in pro, but it's just sad. They've nerfed her so many times. Everybody hates her. Uh, you know, 20% slow at all ranks is brutal. That's a massive nerf going from 80% to 20 because Q is what you max first. Lowering the slow duration also to one second. That's just ridiculous. Like, there's going to be virtually no slow on it. So people are going to be able to escape. You are still going to have, like, some okay poke in the lane. You do have a good ult. Like, you've got some utility, but I think this will definitely lower her presence quite a bit. And then Zach. Not going to matter. He heals back a little bit more, but um, he's still going to keep his relative position in the meta. He's got, like, okay engage, but his damage is pretty low. And there is quite a bit of counterplay to his kit as well. So, he's okay. Anyways, all right, that's going to be it. So, kept it under 30 minutes here. I'm really trying to keep these videos, all of my tier list patch notes, all of this. I'm going to start bringing them, try to bring them down to, like, 15 to 30 minutes. So, let me know what you think. Um, hopefully I gave you enough information there to really understand what's important to know about this patch, uh, but cut a lot of the fluff out, out. So 
Let me know what you think. Otherwise, uh, be sure to check out the rest of the content on the channel. Come by, check out the stream around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.